Welcome to From the Woodshed, where we talk about all things Maine, all things Maine cabins, and all things Maine related. Coming to you from the Kennebec Cabin Company, home of the Maine Cabin Masters in Manchester, Maine. Open year round, stopping for live music, delicious food, and cold beverages before or after your visit to our retail location. From the Woodshed is brought to you by Nelma, see the stamp, trust quality. Hammond Lumber Company, our building materials supplier, and Benjamin Moore, the official paint and stain supplier of the Kennebec Cabin Company. Only available at locally owned stores. We're wicked excited to get started, so let's head on in. From the Woodshed, I'm Chase Morrill. With me as always, Ryan Eldridge and Maggie Morrill. Hey guys. Hi. We're here to talk about all things Maine, all things cabins, all things Maine cabin related. You can find us at KennebecCabinCompany.com, MainCabinMasters.com, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Kennebec Cabin Company YouTube channel. Check out our online store at shop.kennebeccabincompany.com. We always want to thank our sponsors, Hammond Lumber, the official building material supplier of Kennebec Cabin Company, Nelma, Northeast Lumber Manufacturing Association, and Benjamin Moore, the official paint and stain supplier of the Kennebec Cabin Company, only available in locally owned stores. Our guest today is Jay Cook from Maine Insulation Systems. Perfect. He uh, keeps us nice and warm and cozy in all the cabins we get spray foam in, so it'll be great to talk to him, get a little more information. Get he a makes little, us look good. Get a little technical on him. Especially this year. Yes, yes. Doesn't he come in big this year? Yeah, we have a project that was a geodesic dome, and he... You know, bring in the experts because we saved our butts. We Let's were stumped. Say. Yeah, saved our butts. Knew exactly what it needed to finish that exterior. Came out great, and yeah, we love working would, with them. Would you say it was one of the biggest transformations, it, visually wise? Yes, in a, in, a, in a more of an aesthetic way. You know, like <laughs> how do you even say it? I don't. I don't. But even the know. good thing is, you got to watch the episode tonight. I think, right? I I bet it's going to divide a lot of people whether they think it's attractive or not attractive i mean it definitely wasn't attractive when we started and i don't know if the outside's necessarily attractive I... it's a huge transformation right 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean no you yes. know what i mean like yes. it, it will be interesting to see people's reactions to it yeah so yeah let us know what you think about it yeah we didn't <laughs> <laughs> it, it's yeah. we know it's not for everybody but it was a cool project and it was a, yes a very unique building and it's gonna be a great episode. Yeah, and it will. Yeah, he saved my butt. To be honest with you, <laughs> I guess I know one, but that's all right. Yeah, Jay's been with us for quite a long time now. Yeah, it'll be fun talking to him. In the meantime, yeah, how so, were your senior pictures today, Maggie? They were good. It was like a beautiful day. It was, was like not was a beautiful day. Cold, so, where did you do them? Um, Winslow Memorial Park in Freeport. Oh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. It was pretty. How many outfits did you bring? I think I wore like four. Who went? Me, Nicole, and Nori. Oh, Nori went. Mm -hmm. Did you do any photos with Nori? Yeah, it's like very yes. unlike oh, the like nice. four pictures. Excellent. How many she, photos did she take? Like she takes a lot of photos. A lot. Yeah. Did you get to see any of them right away? No. No. Oh. I mean, you've seen how good she makes us look. Man, you are <laughs> yeah. going to be beautiful. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the cal like it's amazing to just watch a professional, you know, like the calendar pictures and stuff. Like some of those pictures are really, I mean, they're all really, really good. But to just we would to live it and then to see it on translate. Yeah, you can't beat a person at the trade. No, nope. and I can't take a picture that translate. Right, and that that's crap. that's true with Jay Cook as well. Right, <laughs> right. Um, I feel like we haven't been together for the longest time in these seats. It's been a weird year, huh? It's been a while. Yeah, I think last podcast was with Jedi, right? Months ago. Yeah, you were sick, so Jedi yeah. filled in. Oh, right. Yeah, everybody's doing good. Everybody's healthy. Yeah, we, um, yeah, with the Lewiston thing happened, that event. Yes. So we just wanted yes. to say, you yes. know, thinking about everybody and in times of darkness, it's amazing to see how they came together and all the stories of true amazing Mainers, you know. And like, just how supportive everybody has been, including the fans, yeah. including the Magnolia Network. You yeah. know, they reached out. Just to make sure everybody was okay, and you know we all appreciate it. And I don't think anyone was okay at first. We, we all never thought we were always no. like that won't happen in Maine. You know, like yeah. 
it was a gut punch. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. For but sure. We're going to rise through the ashes stronger and yeah. better than before. Absolutely. Yeah, new episodes are airing now. So. Yeah, what else is going on? Woodshed's clo- slowing down. Yeah. Tourist season's slowing down. Everybody's getting ready for winter. Sort of. There are so many like different license plates still coming up as I was driving back from Freeport. Really? They're still here. <laughs> They're still here. It's <laughs> freezing cold. <laughs> but there's no snow on the ground yet, so maybe that encourages people. Yeah. So yesterday at the job site, every- Dixie kept being like, oh, this is weird. Like, I feel like the way, yeah, I feel like yesterday was cold. That should be like, what, what is normal? Like this time of year, 40, like today was warm, but like mid forties, right? Like, I don't know. I don't either. I don't think there is a normal anymore. Like, no. So Doug and I were talking, but like in the eight, I don't know if I don't remember correctly, but I feel like in the seventies or eighties, like it got below freezing Thanksgiving. <laughs> Snow was on the ground, and it didn't come above freezing until Easter. So we always used to have Thanksgiving at the Industry Town Hall. Where we're going this year, right? Where we're going this year. There's a tiny little pond across the street. And every year, it was always a question of whether or not we were able to stand on that pond. Did you try every year? Of course. <laughs> Make it sense to go first? <laughs> Yeah, I think you always started out by throwing rocks, you know, if if there even was ice, throwing rocks onto it and see if those hold. Mm-hmm. And then typically we'd end up, I think we'd end up just shoving Ravi out onto the ice. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's where we'll be again this this Thanksgiving. Or we'll, we'll get back to you on the ice test. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know there was a pond there. It's tiny, like teeny tiny. So yeah, it was always hit or miss whether or not. I like it something different. I've never been there. So I'm excited. You never been there? No. Nope. Oh. I was a Wayne. When were we? Well, we were there recently, weren't we? I didn't think I missed last it. Thanksgiving. We were playing. Where do we play baseball? We yeah, Ash, Ashley two... and I were uh, out of the country. Thanksgiving to go. Two, two th- Thanksgiving. We were in Greece last year. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Two Thanksgivings. Ago. It was warm that day too. Yeah, but I think we were throwing rocks on the ice then too. I was playing baseball. <laughs> this is riveting stuff, right? right? Let me tell you. Right? <laughs> but yeah, it's the time of year where the holidays come. The days are short, but it just flies by. Flies by, and we're still trying to get some cabins wrapped up. All right. Deadlines don't change. No. Nope. But yeah, it's been a good, good season so far. It's been a weird year. Yep. With the weather and everything, and like. Yep. Oh, and big, big news. Fletcher got a haircut. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like short? Like yeah. short, yes. short. But I mean, he looked, he went from like this, like, being a kid to being like young adult. Yeah. No, like. He oh, it's, full, it's wild. It, he looks really different. <laughs> but speaking of that, we got some cool stuff for um, Christmas. You know, don't forget about that. Oh, yeah. We got lots of new stuff coming into Kennebec Cabin Company. Check out our uh, website. A 1,000 or... piece puzzle. Yeah. A 1,000 jigsaw puzzle, 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzle of us. But then, what like, are we doing? all these logs. Yeah, it's a really it's, hard puzzle. It's like, yeah, if you if you love puzzles and you want a challenge, this is the puzzle for you. And if you finish it, send us a picture, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break. Um, we're going to watch a video, and after we get back, we're going to have our buddy Jay Cook here. has a beautifully re-spaced shed. We use all eastern white pine. We use a ton of it on the cabins we do because it's a natural, local, easily sourced. Beautiful. Yeah, and you can treat it in so many variations that it's it's great. And you can use it made in ways. Yeah. That's how you throw the wood at it, Chase. So roll the pine right at it. Today we have our friend Jason Cook. What's this company called, Chase? Main Insulation Systems. <laughs> Jason, uh, we like to start this out with our water, coffee, and beer. Uh, let's go with the beer. Perfect. Right. And today is brought to us by Allagat Brewing and uh, North Star Stout. Yeah. Stick with the theme. <laughs> Just well, a dark one. It is a dark one. I like it. I like your coasters too here. You like that? And your glass? They 
The class is a take home gift. Oh, I love it. Nice. So let's, let's, yeah, let's start right at the basics. Where do we start? Yeah. You've done, you're pretty much our spray foam guy. Yeah, man. Tell us a little bit about company, your company and when you got started and where yeah. you're based out of. Sure. So I'm based out of Madison. My shop's in Madison. Uh, Main insulation systems. I started, they bought my first rig and I was trying to think of that. I think it was like 13 I bought my first rig. So 10, 11, 12 years ago, something like that. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, I think the first job I did with you guys was the Pillsbury camp, right? Oh, up in uh, the forks. Up, up in the, the forks. Going to the yeah, forks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yes, 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 yes. I don't know how long ago that was. but That was season two. That was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Is that how we got our big claws in India? That was Australia? it. That was it. Yep. <laughs> Mike Pillsbury called me out and said, I need a project done. And it was a uh, Friday. You need it done by Monday. So I said, sure, let's do it. And yeah. And look where it got us. It's a good move. Good move. <laughs> and what's funny is, you know, now we go back, we got a lot of friends from the Sugarloaf area and uh, a lot of ties other than that. Sure. You know? yeah. yeah. And is this your busy time of year? This is the absolute busy time of the year. Uh, November is, you know, everybody's getting, getting ready for the winter. winter. Seems, Seems like, like that, that, that first, first cool day, day in August, August, you know, and popular popular leaves are starting, starting to change a little bit. bit. The cold, cold air is coming, coming down, down, the phone just goes off the hook. hook. And yeah, yeah, November's a busy time. time. You know, and, uh, usually, usually pushes, pushes on through, through to like January, and then kind of slows down a little bit. And can you, I mean, I kind of know the answer to this, but can you spray foam year round? You can, can. yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you, you know, the critical things are substrate has to be 50 degrees, degrees you're spraying against. You have to bring, bring everything up to temperature. It's a challenge. I mean, it's, you know, spraying, spraying foam is always tricky. There's always some element, element you got to deal with. You know, temperature is definitely a big one. Moisture is a big one. You know, the best time to really spray foam is in November. That's kind of a tough time. I like going in the woods in November and. And kind of coming, coming up with busy summer. Wait, wait, why, why is November the best time? time? You know, it's, you know, it's usually drier. drier. It's usually, oh, you know, September, September, October, October November. November. You know, yeah, you know, you know this time of year it's starting to get a little colder. colder but, you know, April, April May, it's usually pretty moist and wet. Summer, it's so hot. It's just, yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you're spraying 120 degree foam on a hot day. It's never any fun. The dead, dead of winter winter's tough because it's freezing cold. But I, but I saw you in some new technology this year. I don't know, those hot days. Yeah. Yeah. The, the ice packs, packs right? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Some, yeah, yeah you definitely got to have the ice packs and August days. Because with, with spray foam, you guys are full gear. gear. You, don't you don't want to get anything on you. So you are head to toe. Yeah, with fully, you know, full suits, gloves. We have ventilation packs, hoods on. The biggest thing is if you're up in a cavity, it's usually. An uninsulated, an uninsulated cavity, cavity and on a hot day, day if it's 90 degrees, degrees outside, the sun's beating on it. You're spraying 120, 130 degree foam. It's, it's pretty warm. warm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Try to drink a lot of water. <laughs> the ice suits work pretty good. Besides, Besides like dehydration in the physical body, body does, does high, high temperature, temperature affect the, the spray, spray foam itself? itself? Oh, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah every, you know, uh, too, too high attempts, you're just exothermic reaction to the foam. Splitting, splitting issues, issues. there's actually you know, there's there's danger issues catching fire, fire oh, oh really, really? yeah there's, there's, there's some issues with it. a lot you so certainly want to have your ducks in a row when you're spraying foam. foam uh and so, and so it's, it's a two-part two part system, system. It, it is and it's what, what are, are the two parts, parts? So, so there's a there's a resin there's a poly iso a and b and a and b yeah yeah the resin and the poly iso sirenate is the is the so, so the B is the resin, resin yeah. and, and that's, that's more of the, because the resin can be made out of different, different, different blowing agents, agents different, uh, you know, we're getting, getting into the chemistry of it. I don't want to misspeak here, here, but it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a blowing agent that, that uh, the, the, the polyisocyanate is, is actually, that's, that's the, you know, like, like a lot of the different spray foams we use that here, old cells, you blow cells, they'll use the same B side, but your B resin is really going to give you different home you want to spray and, and oh, oh so, so b side, side i mean, I mean a side, side more of the standard across the board. it is the one that can kind of it is the one that, that has all the stuff that uh makes, makes it different um there's just different classes just, classes 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 just like, like a record b side was always a more funky it was, it was. Yeah. Yeah. but, but so, so wait, let's, let's, let's go back when you say rig you mean you have an enclosed trailer and you have compressors in there and then you have your two tanks 
right? right? Yeah. And they, they each have an injection, injection pump, pump. Is that right? correct? Yeah, yeah every, every rig, every recent rig, rig has a proportioner, which is actually like the, the brain of the machine. And then you yeah. have a pump system that goes through the drums. And, and the air and everything's from coming through the compressors that run into the air and air is out. You know, you got the, the basics of it is you got A and B coming out of two separate lines, and then at 1200 PSI going through a heated hose, heating up into 120 degrees, going through the reactor, still separated. Going, going through 300 feet of hose, then it hits that gun and goes through these two little teeny pinhole holes on the end of the gun. When you pull the trigger, chemistry happens, those chemicals come, come together and boom, boom, comes out. What, what got you into that? that? You know, you know what? Uh, I've, I've kind of always, always been in the trades, trades. always been in. Uh, my dad was in construction, I always worked in him. I was working full time, I had a had a had job that had insurance, insurance on, had a second job, job and realized you know, they make money, money so I started, started insulating. I bought and sold a lot of distressed material, material found, found a bunch of insulation, got into the insulation business, bought my first rig, because like, hey, hey, it's spray foam. foam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of taught myself, myself how to spray, spray foam, which is not the way we learned how to spray foam. Which is really good going to train. And then I got proper training a few years into it, and it's been a pretty good pretty good job so far. You know, Chase, Chase has a history of spray foam. He has a little ring back in the day. Oh, yeah. I don't even know. Think of a bunch of problems. problems. <laughs> yeah. it, was it was not, not my, my, my father's, father's my uncle. Sure. And, yeah, yeah I, I just got started to help him know with it. That's what happened. We spray in a couple buildings. We spray in a couple buildings. We spray in a couple buildings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to be set up for it every day to do it. It was a very, 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 it was like a few steps above the process. It's, 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 it's hard. hard. You get a new part time on, 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 on the side. And safe. And safe. Yeah. 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 And you're and running two rigs? rigs? I ran, I ran two, two rigs all summer. Keep up. up. Yeah. 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 I just yeah. sent. Yeah. Had a, we, we had some state of the art. We had an accurate dynamic rig we used. Some of your jobs this year. We used that all summer. It's a great rig. I actually think about every reason. So I had equipment this year. And I have my standard E30, which is a gate router. Yeah, yeah, so, so we, we did, did a project, project with you. The episode might, might we'll be close, close to hearing by, by the time this episode, episode comes out. But it was, it was you, Jesse Dome, Dome, and it, it was, was beyond a challenge. challenge. To today's is the, the, my, my favorite project, project I've done. done. <laughs> and, 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 I think that's it. totally. It was so unique. That makes me so happy. I was just going to ask you what you would. In this first year, two weeks, I said, would you have Danny get that project on? You know, I'm kind of, I get myself in trouble. I'm always, yeah, let's do it. You know, know, but that that one was funny. I remember when we first first looked at it. He told told me about it. I'm like, what the hell is this thing? But it was a perfect application of what we used. You know, the three-pound ball with the layer of the top coat. It was perfect. You know, it was just very well of it. Shape a lot, a lot of that stuff, stuff and it was, you know, it was a pretty funky design. design. Yeah, yeah so, so it was a hand-built custom UDS dome. It had, had barn boards, and boards and all the insulation, insulation everything, everything was on the exterior. exterior. So, so it had, had spray foam, foam from, from the 70s, 70s, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then, then coated, coated with, with some, some sort of stucco, stucco, stucco yeah. gunite, yeah, yeah, something. something. And then very porous tarps over that, lots of cracks. So Jay definitely came in and saved our butt. Reform everything, everything and put, put a product, the polyurea, polyurea. Poly- poly- on top of that. You can build the polyurea, which is actually a roof, uh, it's a roof material, material, it's a top coat. coat. Uh, uh, we're, we're getting into a lot of roofing, well, not a lot of roofing, we're probably, probably 20 percent of this lately, but then commercial roofing and flat roofs, it's just a top coat. It's just bomb roof stuff, you know, it's like almost like vinyl line for a truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just do some residential camps. Why not? You were not an artist on that dome, too. I mean, Chase, like, the dome was all moving, like, like, oh, never in a million years. You can do that. Yeah, I mean, the way you got that stuff in and coated everything, it just. Yeah, yeah, you saved, saved, you saved, saved our, our butts, butts for sure. Yeah, we were pretty psyched how it came out. It was, uh, we were scratching our heads on it. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was perfect a perfect application for it. So. Nice. Now, now, back, back to, that to that polyurea. So, so that's part of the system as well. It is. So is that the A and B? Is it like A and B? I don't really know the chemistry. But they're totally different than the spray foam? Oh, Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, you can't cross the two. You can't. 
you know, you, you you know, know like, like a two pound foam, foam and a three pound foam, foam no, no problem. You can you can mix, mix a little, little bit of that together, but the urea and the spray foam have to stay away from each other. Interesting. Why is it the only place we saw spray foam was in old domes? Like think about like. But, but the third, first, first 30, 30 years, years of my life, you saw, I saw it a couple of times. It was these old domes, and it was the sun was hitting it. Man. They, they knew what they were getting into. So, it, it, yeah, <laughs> it was in the 70s. It yeah. was really popular, and yeah. then it kind of disappeared for a while. You know, it was, I looked at that foam on that dome, and that foam was pristine. It mm-hmm. was, you know, we really looked it over. It didn't look like it deteriorated much. It was, that, it was the old poly uh, isocyanate you know mixture the stuff we have now is hfo foam it's uh more environmentally friendly obviously for good reasons but that foam held up it, for 70 since the 70s that foam held up and you know i think through the there was a big push in that time to spray foam with well, the start of it then some stuff happened there was some bad product being put out there There's some people who shouldn't have been spraying foam sprayed foam Spray foam got a little bit of a bad name. People steered away from it. There was off gassing. You could do searches online about bad spray foam, and you know there's nightmare scenarios because it has to be a one to one ratio, and it has to come out at a certain temperature to make good foam. Gotcha. Have to make, if you gotcha. don't make good foam, it deteriorates. So, what actually causes foam to deteriorate? Bad mixture. Bad o- mixture. Op- operator ratio. error. Operator error. Yeah. And but exposure to the sun like oh, yeah yeah if it's exposed yeah yeah it'll sun will deteriorate it but sun, we, sun will deteriorate you know xbs foam board anything, like that. anything yeah yeah but it's amazing not only that it does it insulate but i mean it really some of these old camps that we've kind of cobbled back together it just tightens them up it makes them yeah. bulletproof like the buck and a you know we we picked it we couldn't <laughs> we wouldn't be able to move that if we didn't spray foam it and then we spray foam it and just dragged it right over. Oh yeah, when we jacked the thing up first time, you jack one spot and only one rafter would raise up. Right. It's structural for sure. Yeah. yeah. I remember sure. we uh got it spray foamed and then we moved it over. We got it spray foamed before we set it on the foundation. We moved it over to the foundation, oh, yeah. set it on the foundation, and there was one corner where there was a good two inch gap. And I'm like, oh, it'll settle. It it's still has it still yeah. hasn't settled. Yeah. You know, we filled it in with more spray foam over time, but sure, sure. It, that stuff locked it in nicely. It's structural for sure. Yeah. Now, do they make a spray foam for soundproofing? You know, your open so closed cell spray foam is not a good. People ask me that all the time. Can we spray these walls? The dense stuff is what sound travels through, right? Yeah. So spray foam, two pound spray foam, closed cell very dense not a good soundproofing and it's super expensive open cell spray foam is just that it's open structure sound better sound sound deadening qualities and yeah open cell works better but not as good as fiberglass you know gotcha. something that's lofty yeah. and in terms of our value open cell closed cell is closed cell is like an r7 per inch yeah. open and- cell is r3.3 or 4 per inch you know honestly we're in zone six I personally don't even mess around with open. Well, cell. I was going to ask, yeah. why would somebody use a it's lesser cheap. art? Oh, you gotcha. know, I mean, I, I can get myself in trouble here because some people like to spray open cell. I personally, you know, yeah, perhaps just by saying I don't use it. You know, <laughs> I mean, there's applications for it, but not on exterior walls and in, in where we are. I, I, that's even opinion. though it's cheaper, you need twice as much. You that's get right. the same R value. Half the R value, half the money with all the problems, mm. in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> now, as far as leaving spray foam exposed you know like you also if if it's exposed like in a living space you spray it with some sort of fire so by code yeah intumescent paint has to be covered in in any any exposed area and actually the code now is even behind tongue and groove they're saying they want it sprayed with an intumescent paint because there's no if it's drywall no problem there's a 15 minute yeah mm-hmm. but it's um yeah it's interesting some codes are that way some aren't but yeah yeah for year-round structures year-round structures <laughs> yeah. you know it, it's um it's amazing like to, to to see the difference in like a, a house that has spray foam like one of the first times i really saw that was my parents had a house built like 2005 and um they didn't spray foam the, they, the walls in the basement weren't covered and they went in and did from the box sill down below the frost line and it 
not like a, one tank of oil off a year, I'm you know, sure. because oh, yeah. people don't realize a house is going to breathe. So you have your yeah. ridge vent or your gable and vent, and that heat rises and it will it'll pull that moisture out of the through the concrete. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, uh, not only does spray foam have high R value per inch, it's also, it seals everything up. Yes. You know, these homes, you go into a home, they'll have 10, 12 year exchanges per hour. You should have three. You know, you can spray foam and knock that. Essentially, what you're doing is your that conditioned air that you're pay money to heat the home is leaving at a lesser rate. So it's, you know, it's costing less money. And it's pretty much critter proof with degree. I've, we haven't found anything that really likes uh, to eat it. I wouldn't say that, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't say yeah, that. Mag the, Maggie yeah. would, oh, that's, uh, yeah. Maggie yeah. would yeah. attest to this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they do like it a little bit. But. They like it, you know, it's not, but you know, like under camp is ideal look, you know, if you're going to spray foam anywhere under camp is the place to do it. Fiberglass never works. Right. It's rock wool doesn't work. Critters just crawl up in there. You know, gravity takes hold, it falls down. You know, mice aren't going to live in it, but they're going to travel through it. Yeah. Ants. Sure they'll, are. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, you know, uh, ants, you know, they'll find their way in it. It's not like, they, you know, I haven't seen a huge problem with that, but it's just a pest situation. Nothing's really credit proof. Yeah, yeah. So when we first renovated our house, you know, we had a, had it the whole, whole, gutted the whole thing. And my aunt and uncle said, you know, invest the money in insulation and windows. So we spray foamed it. And the guy... He was like, best thing you can do, because we have an old stone foundation. He's like, spray the basement, spray the foundation. I'm like, I, I fought it. I fought it. He's like, do it, do it, do it. We did it, and it was. It was the greatest thing. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. It just sealed up all the gaps, kept everything out. It, Yeah. There's a reason why Efficiency Maine and these efficiency yeah. programs want to pay to have that done because it's, you know, basements, they say 20, 30% of your heat bill can go through a basement wall. Yeah. You have an uninsulated basement wall, uninsulated mm -hmm. floor. Thermal dynamics, hot goes to cold. It's just they want a thermal break on that. Yes. Yeah. Now, can you explain the difference between a hot roof and a cold roof? Because a lot of the camps, when we renovate them and use spray foam, we'll just we'll have you spray foam everything and no venting. And we get that question a lot. Yeah, that's a that's a big question people ask. So a cold roof, it's usually with your air permeable insulations. Uh, it's usually between studs. Um, and typically it's it's your drywall, your insulation, your proper vent, and then your check. So that way, if that hot, moist air that you're living in goes into that wall, it's able to go through the wash. That's a cold roof. That's a cold roof. That's a cold roof. A hot roof is you're insulating right up against the roof deck or on top of the roof deck with usually a closed cell foam, and there's no venting at all. It is, it's a warm roof. Total separation from the exterior side to the interior side. So you don't need that venting to pull the moisture. You don't. There's, with closed cell foam, there's no, at two inches, there's no dew point. There's no air movement to that wall. So there's no need for, for any kind of air wash or proper vent. Okay. Yeah. And then that's another good question. Um, so in the walls, you recommend a minimum of two inches because that frost, you know, if a nail, you put a nail in and it goes past that two inches, the frost can penetrate through that nail and bring moisture. Is that... Well, well, that's a, so that's, you know, that's a issue anyway. You have a nail going through the foam, you're going to get condensation. Right, yeah. But if you have one inches of foam against that, against that wall, potentially there could be a dew point reaction. And you're going to create moisture and it could be at two inches. There's not going to be. Okay. Oh, know, so it's, two, it's two through inches. the, through the foam itself. Through the that foam itself. Oh, wow. yeah. oh yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, like that thermal is... bridging almost like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that makes way more sense. Yeah. yeah. So science. It's <laughs> biggest, biggest benefits, close cell foam. No air is moving through it. No dew point at two inches. Gotcha. Effective bar value. The downside to it is there's no there's no uh, air moving through the foam, so you, you you may create a home that's too tight. That's below three air exchanges per mm -hmm. hour. Well, then you need mechanical, and you know you can control everything in modern building. Why not control the you know your your air exchange? Sure. You know, people people don't like to put an ERB or some kind of air exchange in their home codes are pushing us that way you're never going to see it in camps or in these smaller towns right. but you know these bigger bigger towns are really pushing it sure yeah how many camps do you think you've done for us cabins oh boy I bet, I don't know. a lot huh it's been know. we've been together for a long time i mean i feel like just this season we've lined them up boom 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 boom, boom. oh man i gotta say it's you guys are my my favorite contractors <laughs> you know kudos to you you guys are pushing out a great product and you know, there's no stress and it's always fun. Kudos to you. We yeah. call, Jay, we need this done. Yep. You I'm know, on it. You're yeah, one of the couple done. subs that I've tried to teach Chase a lesson. Like when we first got started with you, I'd always write you a check right then and there. 
you know, we're just building a relationship and um, you, you've always jumped for us and um, yeah. we really appreciate everything. Yeah. Sure. Well, it's yeah. been fun, man. It's, uh, yeah, his, hopefully you guys do 20 more seasons. I like being that small part of it. You know? That's really <laughs> oh, you're a big exciting. part of it. Yeah. Especially this year. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. I think Maggie has a few questions. I do. All right. Um, sort of talked about it earlier, but I'll ask it um, anyways. Are you ready? I am ready. All right. Um, what is the difference between ex open cell and closed cell? So it's ex it's essentially that. It's an open cell structure as opposed to a closed cell structure. Uh, open cell is a five-pound foam. It's almost, it's, it's almost like a sponge. Um, closed cell foam is a tighter cell structure. It's two pound, three pound foam, or even higher. Oh, wait. So did I do it backwards? No, I don't know. What? So closed cell is a lesser number and open cell is a bigger no. number. Open cell is a five pound. Is, no, no, 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5, yeah, 0. Yeah, 0.5. So okay, 0. sorry, 0. I missed the 0.5. That makes more sense. So a half pound foam, we call it half pound yeah, foam. Yeah, it's density almost. It's yeah, it is density. Yeah. So, so open cell is, uh, it's almost like a sponge. Mm -hmm. Closed cell is a, is a, just a structurally stronger, it's like a board foam, two pound foam. Open know, cell's 0. 0.5, closed cell's two pound. Open cells are like a dollar sponge from the dollar store. That's closed right. cell is like the good old 3, 3M bristle pad. That's right. Yeah. So well, then the, what's, a, what's a five pound foam? That's even stronger, man. <laughs> well, that's steel that's wool. Like the, that's the big daddy of foam. <laughs> so the, the, the roofing foam we use is three pound foam. And honestly, I've, I've never sprayed anything over three. I think they make foam more, you know, that's in the higher densities, but. I mean, what's the application of that? I mean, if you're working for NASA, maybe. But, <laughs> right. Oh. Well, tensile strength of three pound foam is really all you need. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. All righty. Um, next question is Could a homeowner do spray foam by themselves? Well, they could. Um, you know, there are frost packs out there, but I'll be honest with you the, you know, the cost of a frost pack per board foot and the cost to have somebody who's a spray foamer that, that can use quality two pound foam board foot wise it's probably cheaper to hire the professional to do it frost packs are great if you need them in a pinch you got to go somewhere you know you, you guys see our limitations we come in with trailers we need power unless you have a gen rig there's there's limitations there a homeowner definitely can do it um get on youtube and definitely do a couple yeah we my, do not I, recommend it my <laughs> one piece of advice for that is make sure your tanks are warm. heated and stay heated because when you start releasing that pressure they cool right down and you can finish and have half a tank of material and you in. throw away yeah, yeah that's not accessible yeah so if you um if you you know one one trick to that get an electric blanket wrap those things up plug it in let it sit overnight at 70 degrees and then you know you'll be able to spray with them but and they're messy i'm sorry Froth pack. Froth pack is a is a small portable um, insulation. You can buy them. It's there. like two twenty five pounds propane propane, right? propane tanks. Propane tanks. A and, B. A and B. And they come with these long hoses and these plastic things. And at the end of the day, you're throwing away about fifteen pounds of garbage. It's you um, waste a lot yeah, of product. You waste a lot of product. And honestly, board foot wise, you're probably paying two bucks a board foot for it. Where I'll spray it for a buck thirty. You know if. But, if you're on a budget and you got to choose where and when to spend the extra money, I, I know we highly recommend spend the money on the spray foam because it's, you're going to get your money back in the long run. Yeah. The if first I, job I did was with the froth pack for myself. Yeah. And what a nightmare that was. Yeah. It was tough. Yeah. Uh, now, can, so if, if somebody, how would somebody, what's the best way somebody could prep and get ready for you for spray foam? Like you can't, it's not like cellulose. You couldn't just drill a hole in a wall and spray cell foam, uh, spray foam down into that. And it's there, there are injection foams that you can do, but I don't do that. Yeah. That's more of an open cell thing. If they just shoot liquid down and then it grows into the cavity. Mm -hmm. it's, I haven't seen anybody around here that does that, but that you can do that. Um, how do you prep a job? Uh, biggest thing. Take all your personal stuff away from the wall and cover it with plastic because we can make a hell of a mess. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest thing. Every, every time you pull the trigger, there's these 10,000 little balls that kind of shoot out and they get on everything. Yeah, there's, there's overspray. Oh, yeah. yeah. But how great is it for us to say, okay, Jay, camp's ready. Come back in two days and we're throwing the pine at oh, it. Oh, for it's, sure. It's amazing. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, let's see. Uh, 
it is a messy messy product though so preparation is you know just plastic and covering everything that you don't want to get ruined and also i mean you you're pretty great about i've seen you take and spray some on a, you know spray some foam on a piece of cardboard peel it block and use that almost as a dam to blo- do some sort of block stuff oh, like sure. that. Yeah, yeah like you've got a lot of different creative ways to kind of make it work in the spots but even blocking over knot holes you know sure. we, we try and go in and because if you spray foam it and it has a spot to expand outward you know even if there's just tie par then that there's going to be a bubble out there so well that's because i was doing a job for a guy in his camp and he took his prized deer head and brought it outside the house while we were spraying and there was a knot hole there and we sprayed and the foam went through the knot hole on his deer oh so we we're always trying to be super careful yeah. <laughs> foam will go foam will travel a mile what it needs to hit something and once it hits it then it turns then it, the, the chemical will travel but it needs a substrate to hit on until it turns to foam so that's the thing about roofing so like we're doing roofing so it's like you could be spraying and the wind could pick up and you could shoot foam across town and it could land on somebody's car and then it turns to so you foam. Be very careful. you gotta be very careful yeah. holy smokes yeah. <laughs> not the job for me <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's just yeah it's a uh something you gotta worry about yeah so that's how they can prep for sure. Oh, I got one last question. What you got? How did you ever find a series of employees with the name Nemo in uh, Maine? <laughs> I had Nemo and Nemo Squared. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the Pure trippiest Nemo. things ever. I'm like, I know I met the other guy. And he's like, no, his name's Nemo. I'm like, yeah. what are the chances? Yeah, I had Nemo want to work me for years. We still yeah. kind of worked together. And then Nemo Squared came along and he worked for a couple months. And then ever since then every employee that i've had i say okay we're going to cabin masters when you meet ryan tell him <laughs> yeah. your name's nemo <laughs> I, I literally like four hours like, i'm like talking to ashley like, i'm so confused but <laughs> what are the chances right what are the chances <laughs> yeah jay well thank you so much we really appreciate everything thank you and do you have a website or i do it's not a you know it's a main installation systems.com i don't think i've looked at it personally in five you got more years, than enough but, for it yeah, yeah yeah we got we got plenty of stuff to do but yeah, we're uh, yeah we're just keep keeping going, keeping our contractors happy, and doing a lot of efficiency main work right now. That's fifty percent of it. Keeping main warm. That's it. Well, thank you. I think we're gonna head to the woodshed, or they're gonna be bringing us snacks here next. So stay tuned. Yeah, thanks, Jay. Mm-hmm. All right, thanks. Painters love this moment. And while it might not look it. This moment, too. Come on, don't be shy. Come on through. How do you guys like it? I like the new setup. Oh, we like it. It was great. Yeah. Is it an improvement? Yeah, I love it. Very good. Awesome. So, yeah, that's where the kitchen bar used to be. What's the story behind these shirts? Okay, so my good friend John Bopre has given me over the years. Um, This is Jim Rice, Hall of Famer. Um, And then Boston Strong, and that. Who was that? Uh, picture, it's gonna take me a minute, sorry John. But yeah, he's um, given me the, uh, these over the years. Uh, he's a big fixture in Sugarloaf and is always a mentor to me. And uh, he's always been a big supporter of us, so yeah, thank you. And we've had him waiting to go up for a long time, so what a perfect spot. Let's get another opinion. John Tyler, our hammer hammer one of the reps. Um, Woodshed regular, one of our most loyal customers. What do you think on the new things? I think it's great. It gets people away from just the entryway and we can just kind of mingle, have a good time, and meet up with friends and good friends. And we have a whole dining room back there. Yeah, that's great. What do we got going on, Paige? Yeah, we got some Carolina Gold Wings. We got our jalapeno Ooh. poppers, our barbecue oh pork flatbread. Beautiful. All that good stuff. Yeah. And look back here. This is where the uh, kitchen is now. And, you know, our, our cooks love to be seen, but they want a little privacy too, so. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. We have Evan, one of our favorite cameramen. Heidi, design team. Heidi, uh, My mom. Mo- oh, mom. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Jay, Jen. What do you guys think? Uh, Honest. What do you think? What do you, do you like it? Actually, it's very comfortable. Yeah. Very good. cozy. I like it. Maggie, you gotta sit out. Yeah, these are for you guys. What are they? Oh, wow. These are painter joints poppers. 
brand new to the menu. Painter James Bond. Do we dare you? That's our new smoked wings too, with the Carolina gold sauce on them, and the pulled pork barbecue flatbread for you guys. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, we got a whole new menu. Um, so I've only heard about the painter Jake Poppers now, and then um, they really made Doug the Plumber's day because there's a new French dip. It's called Dunk the Dug. Dunk the Dug. Dug was Dougie was in the dunk tank the last um, lobster bake. And supposedly the au jus looks exactly like the water did. <laughs> what did he say? It smelled like turtle? Yeah. <laughs> you guys want to try some? Don't be shy. Get in here. Yes. Come on. Don't be shy. Jake, Jake's poppers. I'm gonna try one of these. Ooh, I'm gonna have a popper. Have a popper. Oh, those are good. Jake's popper. Mm. Okay, this is Admiral the cameraman. You've never, he's always on that side of the camera. Always on so that it's side. Nice to see him over oh, here. Yeah, I'm over here now. I'm trying to Jake's popper. Ooh, that's good. Mm -hmm. There's a little spice. Yeah. Really spice Into it. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Would you want me to order something different? No, no. I'm gonna go for a wing That's now. Delicious. Mm. Nice oh, job, I love that. Oh, Jake, come on, come try some food, buddy. Don't be shy. We got a popper over here. Personal poppers over here. Don't be shy, mom. I'll do a winger. Classic bruschetta. <laughs> the right tacos right. are back. Mm. Then we brought back our signature sandwiches for this winter, so everyone's excited. That's good stuff. Oh, the wayward Jaybird. <laughs> <laughs> What's the way we're jaybird? How smoked chicken salad and mixed greens in a spinach wrap. That Ooh, I like that. that sounds like Do you know what these were right here? <laughs> what? I heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even eat what? those. Not there. I, mean, I, I don't really. We're, we're I don't know about it. Painter Jake Poppers. And I, pre I appreciate the, the heartfelt thing, though. It's cool. Yeah, I know. So Piece of pizza? Oh, oh, right. just a t is that a teeny uh, piece? Yes, it's perfect. Okay, teeny. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. So as you can see, much like good. cheers. Everybody knows your name. I mean, it's a snack. That's not This is Chase Morrow. He plays some guys. He plays a cop on TV. Some guys don't fall. I know the question's really um, Blake, our friend asking about organization tools. This is Scott Clarky, our new shop. Manager. So he's gonna make sure all these guys, Jake, we got questions. You're gonna put your tools back and get organized. Yeah. Okay. Shop manager. That's not a question. I'm not cleaning up after you. It was a podcast question. It's like, I get Brad. What's now? I don't get mad. I get Brad. Come on, in, guys. That's the tip. Show, show them that. Yeah. That's the get Brad. Back off. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Have you guys seen the new renovations? Um, no. Oh. I'm so excited. Good to see you. All right. So we, we want an honest response to the camera. What do you guys think? It's amazing. I think it is awesome. I think I need a big thing. Like they said, this is our home way from home, chasing their deep conversations. So Maggie and I will walk on out of here and see you some other time, right? Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. So if you want to get involved with From the Woodshed, there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. If you have a question for Ryan and Chase or a question for Maggie or any of the other main cabin masters teams, reach out. If you think you're our biggest fan, Send in a photo of yourself and a phone number. Who knows? We might reach out. Or we do love the project pointers. If you have a project you're working on, thinking about working on, a camp, you just have some questions about how to move forward with it, let us know. Podcast at maincabinmasters.com. And we will uh, hopefully be able to reach out to you and give you some uh, some advice. All right, I mean, heck, if you need any life advice, send it our way. Maybe we know it. Maybe we have an answer for you. If you have a you daughter who's it. a senior right now and... <laughs> Thinking about college, you know, even commiserations, let us know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. But right now we have some questions for us. That we do. Are you ready? We are. Um, 
Okay. <laughs> I just read the first one. Uh, <laughs> Lisa Carroll says, at this point, do you consider yourselves more carpenters or TV performers? A carpenter. <laughs> Always a carpenter. Yeah. But TV, get, being on TV has gotten easier. It has. But for sure. We're, we're 100% unscripted. You know, we're us. But we know where, where to stand because of the light now. We know what to say. Like, we, we can go through the process quicker, you know, like, but we're not actors. We're not actors. And I think it's just, it always is, it's always nice when we're able to get back to actually building, you know, it's, it's just easy. It's almost like meditation and relaxing. Mm -hmm. Just, yep, this wall needs to be pined up. Okay, here's the tools to do it. You don't have to think about anyone, answer, be on a phone call, a Zoom it's call. True. Or... It's true, you know, and meeting. You know, you get in the zone where you just get going. Even though the cameras are right there watching, it's like, yep, I'm going to put up this wall. I'm going to hang these doors, do my thing. And then at the end, there's just going to be some cameras and questions about it. But right. I definitely, definitely appreciate the building side of things yeah. and always will, I think. I like to say that my dad pretends to be a carpenter on TV. When people ask what he does. I mean, I've said that I play a carpenter on TV, but I, I got to admit when, yeah, when, you know, sometimes that question, occupation, I put carpenter. <laughs> I'm like, I really am. I swear. <laughs> well, well, well yeah, I always say this. It's like, you know, when a head chef of a restaurant gets successful, he doesn't cook on the line as many more because you got to deal with the other stuff and you have your sous chef. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I felt the same feeling that definitely when I'm working, a yearn to be on the job site because you leave it all the way. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm more of a pencil pusher these days, to be honest. Not by choice. Not by choice. Okay. Thrilling. <laughs> um, Next one. <laughs> Cynthia she Casper. Put her heart out to her. She <laughs> says that. Thrilling. Do you have a sign-in slash out process for oh, carpenters oh needing these tools? These are funny questions today. Um, <laughs> I'm in the middle of it. Stop talking, Sorry. please. Some kind of manager to keep track of ordering supplies. Cynthia, come. On. <laughs> oh God, don't we got to this? Don't next. No, we do now. We finally do. Yes, we, we can... have finally have be, once we. Well, so the our new lumber yard episode is aired. Yeah, we now have Knowles Lumber out in Monmouth, where it's our construction headquarters. The back forty. We're starting to get organized. Yeah, we call it the back forty. We're starting to get organized. You know, everything's there. We've got a shop to prep things. We are on the right track. We are. And we actually now have a shop manager who's there and is in the process of getting all this stuff in place. You know, again, we, we've got a great wood shop, Powermatic, set it up beautifully. Amazing we've got wood shop. Very nice tools. And we want to keep it that way, but we also want a spot for people, you know, for our guys, for our crew members to be able to make stuff Create, for the show yeah. on their own, for their place, you know, to sell that type of stuff. So, we definitely need some level of organization just to keep it. And it's it's like life. You don't know, there's always gonna be messes. Right. There's always gonna be stuff missing. Somebody's gonna use something when somebody else needs it. It's it's yeah, it's an endless battle. I've accepted that. <laughs> Ryan has accepted um, it. Cynthia, I to a point. I recently we, <laughs> we we got a tool room. I actually bought a gorilla cart so people wouldn't have the excuse to like just leave all the tools by the door or bring it back. <laughs> Hasn't been implemented yet. So if you want to come over for a week or two and just say on everybody, that'd be great. We don't have a label maker yet. I have a label maker. <laughs> it's sitting in my <laughs> office ready to go. Of course you do. Cynthia, if you want to come make labels with me this winter, call me up. <laughs> but um, yes, we, we're, we're on the right track. Here we are. Okay. Last question um, from <laughs> what's happening anymore? These are funny questions. Oh, my. Can you, like, at least wait until I read them? We can't. All right. This isn't even funny. Yes, oh, it is. It is. <laughs> this is from uh, Sarah Bergazzi. Do you have bonfires at every building site? How do you keep warm? We used to. <laughs> we used to. Uh, we got, yes, we used to, but. We we as we're getting busier, people we got lucky too. A couple of fires, like yeah, I, it's hard to keep an eye on it. I think it's like anything else; it can get out of hand. Yeah, and we used to have a burn barrel that we'd bring to job sites, and honestly, it almost becomes more problematic in the end at cleanup time because then you have this burn barrel full of ashes. You know, people are standing around it; it's muddy. There's at it's it's a bigger mess, right? 
and you know again people are burning a lot of stuff that shouldn't be burned shouldn't be burned whether it's scrap pieces that aren't scraps yet so we try and limit burn we bonfires a, now we have a ban on pretty much we have a burn pile at the back 40 yeah. where a lot of materials brought to but we also have a wood furnace in the back 40 so we try and save as much of the scraps to burn as well and our dear friend kim and our dear friend kim yeah, thanks, Kimmy. Kimmy lives out in Mount Vernon. Kimmy helps out a lot. We're out there a lot, and she takes. She loves all our scrap wood and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, just funny. Just a but really they, funny group of questions. Yeah. They all touched a little. Yes. Ner funny nerve. And they all have a funny story <laughs> that maybe we'll go into more. And we, yes, we have gotten lucky. That's a story for a round of bonfire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you have any more questions, again, like Chase said, send them in to um podcast at maincabmasters.com and that has to be the best set of questions yet that was a good one all right great job maggie thank you and now we are on to maggie's trivia question i feel like i haven't gotten to hear an answer in a long time i don't remember the last questions i i i'm not even sure i remember the last question um so i'm gonna read what i think is the question that we did um Name one of the two Bowdoin College explorers who sailed yes. together to the North Pole on the SS Roosevelt. Oh, oh it's, 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 we just we've talked about him before. Yeah, uh, there's two of them. Perry. Yep, Robert Perry. And Sir something. Nope. <laughs> Hamilton. Nope. Ah, Donald no. McMillan. Oh, McMillan. Perry's course. a more famous one. Perry's a more famous yeah. one. Yeah, that guy has a nut house down in Belfast. <laughs> I don't that even know what that is. Well, means. pre Maggie. <laughs> oh, there was a tourist trap in Belfast. Perry's Nut House. Perry's Nut House. And they had like um, stuffed animals and nuts and candy and they like, had real like animals. A, a taxidermied baby elephant. Yeah. They had all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff in there. Oh my God. And they, they sold peanuts and fudge. Yeah. What on earth? <laughs> it was a great place. A great American I'm institution. sure it was great. <laughs> Still, that field it trip. is still there. The they sold off all the taxidermy animals, animals, animals. animals. Yeah, thrilling. Maybe a live podcast from that from next year. <laughs> okay. This week's question is: In what year was the voting age in Maine reduced to eighteen? Oh, that's a good question. Good question. If you know the answer, be the first person. To email us at podcast at maincavamasters.com. I got another question. What year did the um, age to get your driver's license go from 15 to 16? Do you know the answer? I did. It was his year. I got my license when I was 15. I cannot believe they gave me my license when I was 15. Oh, Mag Nori goes Monday. Yes. Oh, by the time this episode's air, we'll know if Nori's a licensed driver or not. Look out, cookout. <laughs> See how Karen did. <sighs> All right. Well, thank you to our guest, Jay Cook. Thank you to our sponsors, Hammond Lumber Company, Nelma, Benjamin Moore. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you. And from the woodshed, we'll be talking to you. From the woodshed is brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp, trust quality. Hammond Lumber Company, our building materials supplier, and Benjamin Moore, the official paint and stain supplier of the Kennebec Cabin Company. Only available at locally owned stores.